Hello everybody and welcome to Flinders University, particularly to the College of Business, Government and Law. We are so excited that you'll be joining us for your studies this semester. My name is Sam Contra and I'll be taking you through these welcome slides, joined by several of my colleagues along the way. Before I go any further though, I want to acknowledge that Flinders University, where we're presenting this video from, is on the lands of the Ghana people. And I'd like to acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging and pay my respect to them. To start our presentations for today, we're going to have some official welcomes. We'll start with a welcome from our Vice Chancellor of the University, and then we'll move to our College of Business, Government and Law, starting with our Vice President and Executive Dean, and then moving to our Dean of Education. Welcome to Flinders. I'm Vice Chancellor Colin Sterling, and I acknowledge that I'm speaking on Garna Yarta, the traditional lands of the Garna people, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Hello Marnie. Hello, I'm Deborah West. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which our campuses are located in South Australia, the Northern Territory and Victoria. I'm delighted to see so many new students joining us at Flinders, whether you're studying at one of our campuses or online, from the comfort of your own home. You're now part of the Flinders community. Every year it's terrific to see that so many people have chosen to study at Flinders. I love walking around our campuses, feeling that incredible buzz and seeing students just like you, talking to new friends, sharing ideas, helping each other out. That same sharing nature extends also, of course, to our students studying online. Hi, I'm Simone Olagatur. As a young Lundjata woman out of my country, I also acknowledge and pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land on which our campuses are located. At Flinders, we understand that it's a privilege to be on Ghana country and we pay respect to the heritage of this place. We want you to feel welcome at Flinders University and to connect with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture. One way of doing this is through public artworks such as the Brooklyn mural, Yarra, the feather sculptures on Registry Road and in the plaza, the new Younger Rendi and Pirilla meeting place, and the gift of words embedded in the plaza stairs. Your first few days may seem like a bit of a blur. We've all been there. But starting at uni is a big step and it takes time to learn all the ins and outs. But don't worry, plenty of support is available to help you make your transition to study at Flinders as easy as possible. Flinders staff and student ambassadors can help you access the services you need to find your way around our website, around your course material, around our campuses. Whatever help you need, it's only a click or a question away. And I know from experience that our staff and your fellow students are kind, inclusive and always ready to help. So where do you begin? However you choose to study, the Flinders Student website is a great place to start. You'll find orientation information that'll step you through your first few weeks and plenty of information about university life. Our weekly newsletter, Ping, and social media pages will keep you up to date on university events and Flinders news. Flinders has a busy social scene and the Flinders University Student Association, FUSA, can help you connect with social clubs, sporting clubs and many other activities. You'll have access to a range of support services including study and library support, health and wellbeing services, as well as enrolment and course support, just to name a few. Information about how to get in touch with these services can be found on the Support and Services directory on the student website. You can contact the Flinders Connect team if you need to help with your enrollment or course information. The Student Learning Support Service is here for any academic help you might need, including how to write assignments, general study skills and referencing. You can access study support on campus at the Learning Lounge or online using Flinders 24-7 Studiosity Service or through a wide range of online SLSS study guides and videos accessible via the student website. Our confidential and professional health, counselling and disability services are available to all students and you can access those face-to-face, -face, on the phone or online. Whether you're studying with us online or joining us on campus, we're confident you're going to love being part of the Flinders community. And we hope you'll have the time of your life. My name is Michael Gilding and I'm the Vice President and Executive Dean of the College of Business, Government and Law at Flinders University. Um, the, the college includes uh, uh, the business, all the business disciplines. It includes uh, 
international relations and politics. It includes uh, all the law degrees and it includes criminology. So uh, if you're studying uh, one of those degrees, uh, you're part of the College of Business, Government and Law. Um, the college is partly about education, but it's about more than that too. So we, we have some, uh, we have our, our teaching um, uh, parts of the college, but we also have some research centres and, uh, and our, t and our t teachers and our researchers often work together on large projects and we engage a lot with industry as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a big operation. And basically my job means that within the college, uh, the, the buck stops with me. So uh, if there's an, an, uh, something that really escalates within the college um, and you're involved, then we'll, we'll meet up sometime. So look, welcome to Flinders. Uh, it's wonderful that you've chosen to come here. Uh, some of you will be domestic students um, from South Australia. Some of you will be from other parts of Australia. Uh, some of you will be from uh, international students from, uh, from all over the world. Um, some of you will be doing undergraduate, some of you will be doing postgraduate, some of you will be coming straight from school and some of you will be doing it as mature age students. So there's a whole lot of different places that you're coming from but the bottom line is that you're all here to start to study in the College of Business, Government and Law. Um, and of course the other bottom line is that it, this is a new phase of your life for all of you. So starting a new qualification, starting a new degree, starting a new career, these are really big decisions, and uh, so this is this is an important moment, and it's an important uh, um, point in your lives as as you progress, and and uh, this is the start of something new, something big. So, in doing something new, something big, uh, changing your lives, uh, making decisions about what your career is going to look like, um, it, it's a it's a there's a lot of new things that are going to be involved and uh, you're going to need to uh, acquaint yourself with the university and of course it's a complicated time to be acquainting yourself with the university because uh, the last couple of years with COVID it's really changed things fast and of course uh, the way in which we do higher education has already been changing a lot because of new technology and because of online delivery but COVID has really accelerated all of that and presented all sorts of new challenges for us as educators and as researchers. And uh, so we've had to rethink many of the ways in which we do things and many of the ways in which we work with students. And that's been difficult. It's been really tough. Um, it, you know, this has been a distressing time. It's been a difficult time. But uh, I don't think we're ever going to go back to the old normal. You know, like the, the, the way things have changed, some of those changes will be embedded in the future. And uh, and so it, it does mean that the way in which you learn to be a student and the way in which you prepare yourself for your new career will be different from the way in which it's happened in earlier times. And, um, and that presents particular challenges. So look, just a couple of tips. Um, first of all, um, whatever you do, you know, take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way uh, as you're coming on board. You know, like this is a, a kind of moment of re-socialization, of preparing yourself for a new discipline, preparing yourself for a new career. And, and there are a lot of opportunities at the moment, so take advantage of every one of those opportunities. Um, make sure that you don't get behind, you know, start off strongly, uh, and then you, know, then, then you can kind of um, make sure that you build really strong foundations. I mean, it's sort of obvious, but it's easy to get distracted, and it's also easy to get a little bit scared when you're starting something new. So make sure you start strongly. Um, the university is offering a lot of opportunities as you begin. So there's mentorship schemes, there, there's uh, all sorts of different opportunities to understand the university, to become acquainted uh, and learn about how to be a student and learn about your, your discipline. Um, so please take advantage of every one of those opportunities. Some of those will be face to face and some of them will be online. Just take as, you know, just use that opportunity to learn as much as possible, to learn as much as possible. And no less important, um, you know, when you come into a new environment, uh, it's kind of the moment that you're most open. You know, it's the moment you're most open to new ways of thinking. It's the moment you're most open towards making new friends. And uh, when you start a new place, really, I can't stress strongly enough, uh, meet as many people as you are able to. Um, by meeting as many people as you're able to, um, you'll extend your networks. And, and so much learning occurs through peer learning. So much learning occurs through talking with other people, sharing ideas with other people, um, and, that, and that's how a lot of learning actually occurs. So, so meet lots of people, uh, extend your social networks, uh, make them as wide as possible, and that will stand you in really good stead as you go forward. So look, welcome to Flinders. 
Um, uh, all the very best. Uh, I look forward to, uh, uh, to being in touch with you throughout your, throughout your, your degree and uh, enjoy this time of, of this, you know, when you start, it's always a little bit disorienting, but it's also really exciting. So make sure you concentrate on the exciting bit. All the best. Welcome everyone. My name's Christopher Key and I'm the Dean Education for the College of Business, Government and Law. Uh, the Dean Education doesn't mean that I teach education. Uh, education portfolio is really quite a very wide one within the college. Uh, it encompasses everything from uh, student recruitment all the way through to the educational quality aspects of the courses that we design and deliver. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be able to welcome you uh, to the college and to Flinders University generally. Uh, you may have already heard from our executive, Vice President and Executive Dean, Professor Michael Gilding, about how COVID has had an impact on how we're going to be approaching and delivering our teaching this year in particular. Uh, and another point that he made was the importance of uh, engaging and increasing your own social networks uh, during your time here at uni. So with both of those things in mind, I thought I would give you some insights into how we're going to approach things from a teaching perspective. Our aim is to uh, absolutely maximise to the most greatest extent possible and all the other tautologies I can think of in that sentence uh, to get you time and action on campus. We really want you here if you can be here and if it's safe to do so. So a lot of work has gone in behind the scenes, looking at room capacities and timetabling. Uh, and so we're taking many, many steps to ensure that that uh, can be done. We're very conscious though, that throughout the semester, not everyone will be able to be on campus all the time. There will be disruptions. Uh, and so we're also making available uh, online opportunities within each of the topics to ensure that people can continue with their learning, even if you're disrupted from physically being here. When you are here, it's going to be important that we all behave and conduct ourselves in a COVID safe way. Now in the rooms, we'll control things like social distancing and capacities, uh, but also give some thought to what goes on outside the rooms. One of the uh, common things for students to do, and it's a really wonderful thing to do, is to gather outside the room and talk to each other before you head into a class. But when you're doing that, make sure you do stand socially distanced and keep your mask on uh, both inside and outside the rooms. Take those COVID safe measures. Before I uh, close, I want to just make a, a, an observation about university and your time at university. I want to invite you to think about university as a space. Uh, there's in, in academics, uh, in academic literature and in the research, there's a, a period or a methodology known as the spatial turn. Uh, and I'd invite you to, to think about your time at university in that sort of way. And so if you think about this university, uh, it's a virtual space. We're talking to you in a virtual space at the moment. It's also a physical space. It's a space of amazing physical natural beauty. It's a space for learning uh, and it's a social space as well. But most importantly, and what I really want to emphasize to you is that it's a space in which you belong. And so the journey that you're going on with your degrees will have highs and lows. It's inevitable that that will be the case. When those lows do come along, don't turn away from the university, turn to the university. We have support structures that assist our students to ensure that you can all succeed, uh, notwithstanding that life will throw various things in your direction. So my last very, very most crucial piece of advice is simply this, have fun. Thank you. Now that we've officially welcomed you here to Flinders, I'd like to take you through some orientation tips to help starting your journey become that little bit easier. So first, make sure you get your essentials sorted. What are essentials for university study? Well, let's talk through some of them. So the first thing that you'll need is a student ID card and you can request your ID card online by going to Compass 
and clicking on My Systems and Order My ID card. You'll also need to enrol in your topics. The new student section of Compass has a lot of helpful information that can help you with this, but you can also submit uh, an, a support request through Ask Flinders or Call Flinders Connect. Now you'll be hearing a lot about both Ask Flinders and Flinders Connect as we go through this presentation. Make sure you keep those in mind because you will undoubtedly need to put in some support requests throughout your studies here at Flinders. Textbooks. So in most of your topics, you'll probably have a recommended textbook or two that you need to, to read. You'll also have other readings and we'll talk more about those a little bit later. To find out which textbooks are required, you can find uh, that information by following the link on this slide or alternately you can find out once your topic is available on Flow, Flinders Learning Online. More about that and how to access it a little bit later. Accessing the campus. So if you're driving to campus, we have lots of car parks available, though I guess one tip is that you should get here early so that you can make sure to get a park. You can find lots more information about parking on campus by going to flinders.edu.au slash parking, and you can find out two different ways of paying for your parking permit. We also have a Flinders rail line, so you can use the Flinders railway line to get to Flinders. And once you're on campus, we actually have several different campuses and you can use our loop bus to move you between the Bedford Park campus, the Sturt campus and Tonsley. You'll find more information if you download the Buslander app. Scholarships. Starting university can be very daunting and it can also be a bit of a strain financially. So students can apply for scholarships and you don't need to be a top performing student to apply. So to find out more about this, please visit our website. When you're on campus, you will most likely need to access our Wi-Fi and you'll probably be using the internet during your classes as well. So here we have some information about how to do that. Um, you'll need to sign into the EduRoom network. You'll need to use your username, which is your FAN. So each of you will have been given a FAN when you enrolled in your uh, degree. So you'll have the first four letters of your surname and four numbers, and you will have set up a password as well. You can always find more information by accessing our website. All right, orientation is really important. We're all here to help you feel at home here at Flinders and to make sure that you're ready to hit the ground running with your studies. We have a four week orientation program here at Flinders. The first is O week, which is now when you're listening to this recording. We then have Connect Week, Wellbeing Week and Skills Week because these are all really important things um, you need to understand as you progress through your semester. We have lots of events running across these weeks, so please do make sure you check out some more information online by visiting our orientation planner. We also have an online welcome hub this year, so you can drop in online to the Ask Anything sessions and there you can chat with current students and Flinders staff who can answer all of the questions that you have. You can find more information about how to join using the orientation planner. We also have a series of orientation related videos in our orientation video library. These range from accessing and using Flinders Learning Online, finding your textbooks, understanding assignments and grades, studying for success, support available to you and managing your well-being at uni. You'll also find the, this recording in that orientation video library and some information for each of your disciplines. So by discipline in our college, we're talking about criminology, business, government and law. It's also really important to remember that help is always available and that sometimes studying at university can be challenging. The juggle of all of the different priorities on your time can also be a little bit challenging. Throughout this video, we're going to talk a lot about some of the different supports that are available to you and we really encourage you to reach out and access those supports whenever you need them. We have a flow page called Finding Your Way at Flinders. Now this is specifically designed for first year students in mind when you're new to Flinders University so that you can learn a bit about how Flinders works. You can also have practice navigating through flow and you can see different forums and different discussions where you can ask questions and be guided through how to use this particular platform. To access Finding Your Way at Flinders, you can log into Compass and click on Flow and search for Finding Your Way at Flinders 2022 in the topic search. 
As I mentioned, we have lots of support available to you on campus. This short video introduces some of those supports to you so that you know what's available. Imagine you've turned up to uni for the first time. It can be a little daunting. Where do you go and who do you go to for help? Flinders University has a lot of services to help you on your journey. Sometimes, uni will feel fun and easy. At other times, it can seem challenging. Flinders Connect is there to answer any questions and point you in the right direction. Flinders Connect can also assist you with enrolment, class registration, fees, scholarships and general information. When it's time to study, there's the Library and Student Learning Support Service. Library staff can help you navigate the wealth of information across three Flinders Library branches. If you need help with Flinders Learning Online, the Library helps with that too. The Learning Lounge is available to help with academic writing, maths and statistics, referencing and English language support. You can also access Studiosity 24-7 for support with study and writing online. Everyone is welcome at FUSA, your student association. FUSA is home to the Student Council elected annually by students like yourself. It's their job to represent your rights and interests. They host lots of events on campus and are home to many clubs and societies for you to get involved in. FUSA also produces the student magazine Empire Times and offer free and confidential financial and academic advocacy. Flinders has more than 3,000 international students from over 80 different countries. International Student Services is the first point of contact for all onshore international students and offers a range of programs supporting your enrolment, study and social life. The Younger Rendy Student Engagement Team provides support for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. This includes academic, pastoral, financial support and advocacy, scholarships, orientation, a culturally safe study space, social activities and more. Looking after your mental and physical health is important. At Health, Counselling and Disability Services, students can access confidential appointments with qualified doctors, nurses, experienced counsellors and disability advisors. Oasis is a student wellbeing centre focused on supporting the social, spiritual, physical and emotional needs of all students. Careers and employability connects you with industry, employers, career resources, or advice and access to over 8,000 job opportunities each year. It also houses the Flinders Horizon Award program, providing unique opportunities and experiences to complement your studies. Let's keep in touch. Each week during term time, we send a newsletter called Ping straight to your uni inbox. It's designed so you only see what's relevant to you. Let us know if you have any ideas or feedback to improve your experience at Flinders. The Student Ideas Gateway allows you to tell us how to help. To connect with any of the services mentioned, go to students.flinders.edu.au. We also have some mentoring programs available to you to help you settle into your studies and your time here at Flinders. The first is the OGUIDE program, which is for postgraduate students in our college. Through the OGUIDE program, you'll be connected with a student mentor within the college, and they'll be able to provide you with tips and tricks for the first four weeks of your studies, including O Week this week. For our undergraduate student, we have a more in-depth mentoring program where you're paired with a mentor in your discipline who guides you through your first semester at university. So they'll give you tips and tricks about navigating the university environment, finding things on flow, using the library, helping you to connect with other students, so to start that social connection at, at university and in your discipline. They won't help you with your assessments, of course. That would be a breach of academic integrity, and you'll find out more about that later. But they'll be there to help and support you throughout your semester. Safety on campus is really important, so we need to make sure that you're aware of some of the supports that we have available here. If you witness or you experience any socially unacceptable behaviour or so harassment, we encourage you to make a report. These reports are confidential and they don't initiate a complaint. It's just the first step to offer you confidential support and information about what you can do and how we can help you. You can make these reports online through the Safety on Campus webpage by email or by calling 8201 2118 for support and advice from our Student Equal Opportunity Advisor. At this point in our presentation, I'm going to hand over to one of my colleagues who's going to give you a few tips about settling in at university. So, you made it to university. What next? How do you make the most out of your experience here over the next few years? My name's Melissa Devel Palumbo. I'm a lecturer in criminology, and I'm going to give you a few tips on navigating university life. 
First, I want to talk about destinations. I want you to think about why you're here. Why did you choose to come to university instead of doing something else? Maybe for some of you, it's to get a qualification so that you can get that job that you're passionate about. For others, maybe it's about learning something new. Or maybe it just seemed like the least worst option. But think about what you want to get out of your time here. This is your goal, your destination. That destination is important. That destination is why all the time and effort that you put into your studies is going to be worth it at the end. Remember that reason, that destination. It will keep you motivated. But while you should keep your destination in mind, the journey is no less important. You're now a student, part of the academic community here at Flinders. Student life is as rich as you want it to be, and it's about so much more than just academic study. So take advantage of this unique time in your life to learn and to grow in all the ways you can. Explore new concepts and new ideas. Join a club, make new friends. Connect with the people and the things that you care about. This is what being a student is all about. So make your journey a rich one. And another tip I want to give you about your journey is that the quickest way to your destination is not always the best one. This is really critical. Uni is hard work. It's new. It's not quite like school. It's not quite like work either. There are so many tasks to juggle. You've got lectures, tutorials, readings and assignments for each topic. Your teachers aren't with you all day anymore, peering over your shoulder. And you know what happens when things are hard? We take shortcuts. Wait, I don't have to do that reading? I don't have to come to class? Maybe I won't. As humans, we're lazy, or as I like to say, efficient. <laughs> but if you don't invest in your journey properly, you're not going to have a good ride. I'm going to tell you a quick story about shortcuts. Some of you may be old enough to remember when the Southern Expressway here in Adelaide was one way. So in 2001, when the government built the Southern Expressway, it was touted as the world's longest reversible one-way freeway. You could travel north in the mornings and then only south in the afternoons. But why did we build it one way? Why not two way? Well, at the time of building, the government said that it was too expensive to build it as a two-way freeway. But 10 years later, after realizing how terrible the idea of a one-way freeway was, right, no wonder nobody else had built one in the world, <laughs> the government expanded it to accommodate two-way traffic at more than five times the cost it would have been to build it two-way from the get-go. What's the moral of the story? Don't take shortcuts. University comes with a lot of independence and flexibility, so it's tempting to want to take those shortcuts. But invest in your journey and you'll have a better ride. Another really helpful thing that you can do to navigate university life successfully is to develop your own learning routines. Just as we're efficient as humans, we're also creatures of habit. So continuing with my driving theme here, have you ever been driving and you've gotten a little bit distracted you suddenly notice your brain has gone on autopilot and you've started driving a familiar route, an old route perhaps, not the one that you intended to drive that day. This is because the habitual path is the easy path. So if you want your learning journey to be smoother, put your learning on autopilot and make study a habit. Attend your classes regularly. It'll be easier this way to keep up with your work. Set aside the same blocks of time every week to do your readings, so you're not scrambling to do them last minute or forgetting to do them altogether. And at first your efforts will feel hard because starting a new routine is hard, but eventually it will become a habit. And the more you practice, the better you will get at it. But of course, despite our best efforts, journeys aren't always smooth. We know this. This is why you don't have to ride this journey alone. If you need something or if you're not sure which way to go, ask someone, your peers, your teachers or professional staff. We'll connect you to the people and services who will help you on your journey and safely get you to your destination. Bon voyage. You will have already realised that you need to enrol in topics here at Flinders University in order to be able to actually study your discipline. So I'm going to hand over to a couple of our enrolment advisors so they can give you some tips about that enrolment process and traps to look out for. 
Welcome to Flinders University. My name's Janine Clark and I'm an enrolment course advisor. This is my colleague, this is Samantha De Francesco, and she's an enrolment course advisor in the College of Business, Government and Law. Um, just a few points for your enrolment. Um, if you need any help with general course advice, call Flinders Connect. You can contact them on 1300 354 633 or you can lodge an Ask Flinders request and they'll be happy to help you. One or two topics is classed as part-time, three or four topics is classed as full-time, which is a full-time study load. If you, are, if you have a combined degree, please make sure that you find the combined degree course rules because they are different to the standalone course rules. We don't want you taking topics that are not included in your combined degree. There are also study planners on the, on the web pages that you can search for that will give you an overview of all your degree. Again, if you need any, any help or support, please contact Flinders Connect. To contact me or Samantha, please lodge an Ask Flinders request and we'll be happy to help you with um, more general and more course advice. A lot of our degrees have both option topics and elective topics that you can take throughout your degree. If you are unsure about which elective topics you might want to take, we do have an elective advice webpage, which do put different areas of study together, which might help you enhance your enhanced skills across your degree. These can be different study areas, such as innovation, communication skills, or any industry experience. We do also have option topics which are more specific to the degree that you are studying. For example, if you're studying a business degree, you will do business option topics and that will help you study an area of business that is not specific to your specialisation or your major area. Throughout your business degree, you will also be given an opportunity to potentially undertake an industry placement. This will also be within the law and legal practice, national relations and political sciences degree. For further information, you might wish to speak to your course coordinator about those specific industry experiences. To find your course rule, you can go onto the university's handbook. On here, you can find all of the topics that are offered in each semester. Uh, it is probably best to also look at your study plan because that will help you write down which topics you should be enrolling into and when these should be enrolled. For your enrolment, First year topics, the code starts with a one, second year topics start with a two, third year topics start with a three, and fourth year topics start with a four. Sometimes students get confused and when they're in their first year, they enroll into second or third year topics. We recommend that you enroll into first year topics that starts with a one. It is important to remember when you're enrolling that you enroll into four topics for each semester and no more than this in your first year. This is whether you're in a standalone degree or a combined degree. If you are enrolled in more than four topics, you may wish to contact Flinders Connect to see what the problem is with your enrolment. If you've received your offer and you've not yet accepted or been admitted into your course, the best way to start is probably by contacting Flinders Connect because they can help you activate your uh, Flinders system and help you to confirm and update your details and then enrol in your relevant topics. There are critical enrolment dates throughout your studies. The first one to look for is the last day to enrol. This is generally the second, uh, the second Friday of semester one, so week two. You can change your enrolment and your timetable up until this date. The next date that you may wish to look for is the census date. So if you remain enrolled past this date, this will go as part of your record. However, if you get up to this date and you decide to withdraw, before or on the day, that, that won't be part of your record of study. Just to keep in mind, if you are enrolled past the census date, this is when you end up paying for the topic and that will go to your help debt or you may pay it up front if you are not a Commonwealth supported student. Along with paying for the topics, you also pay a student services and amenities fees, which goes to everything non-academic on campus. So that goes to things such as the library, the upkeep of the campus, and all of the amenities that you find and are able to use on campus. Please keep in mind that these are also the clubs, the health and counselling, and all other things you might be able to access online. So if you are an online student, you also are required to pay these fees. 
Uh, these, again, are different to your tuition fees, so you do need to submit a separate help form. So this might be something you may wish to contact Flinders Connect about if you are unsure how to submit this. So for all you students, we have many services that are available to you. Please reach out and any member of staff will be happy to direct you to the right services that are available. All of the help services on campus are free of charge to students and this, is, this ranges from free health, counselling and disability support services as well as our student learning support services which is help, helping with academic support. These can be accessed through, again, Flinders Connect. They can point you in the right direction, but if you want more specific advice, you can reach out to the Health and Counselling and Disability Services directly, or again, the Student Learning Support Services. So please reach out. You can reach out at any time of the semester. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be the start or near the end. Please reach out for support. If you're overwhelmed, please lodge and ask Flinders request. We'll be very happy to help you. All right, so now you'll have a bit of an idea that you, when you enrol in a topic here at Flinders, you might have some lectures, you might have a tutorial, a workshop, a seminar, but all of this terminology can be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to hand over to one of my colleagues who will explain some of these terms for you. Hi everyone, welcome to Flinders. I'm Jessica Ganawa and I'm a lecturer here in International Relations and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about what you can expect from university classes. So, as we all know, in the last couple of years, this happened, right? Disrupted all of our lives incredibly. And we were wondering, certainly us here teaching at university, if this was going to be us forever. Were we going to be in an online Zoom teaching world forever? And even falling asleep at our laptops, hopefully. <laughs> That's not you, but I'm sure we can all relate to this picture. Here at Flinders, we really understand how important in this context the classroom experience is for students. And whilst we also highly prioritise keeping you safe and ensuring that you feel confident and comfortable at every stage of your learning journey, we also understand that being in a classroom interacting in person with your lecturers, with your tutors, with other students, having those incidental conversations, being able to make those friendships that might last throughout university and maybe even a lifetime is really important to you and particularly as you're starting out at university. And therefore, we want to offer maximum opportunity to safely allow you to have those kind of sessions where you can actually meet and participate with other students wherever possible. Having said that, you might see on your timetable that you've been enrolled in lectures, tutorials, workshops, seminars, and you might be thinking, what does this even mean? What is the difference between these different types of classes? So a lecture is typically an informational class, it usually involves the entire cohort in a topic, so all of the students enrolled in a class, which we call topics here at Flinders. And this is typically an arena where the lecturer is trying to transfer the key information for that topic to you as students. Now, in regular times, those lectures used to take place in person whilst they were always also recorded if students <clears throat> needed to watch it afterwards or wanted to watch it back. However, given the current context, lectures will typically be delivered online. Now, that may or may not be the case for your specific topic. So always the best guide is going to be your topic guide and your topic coordinator. So if you are at all unsure, or you don't know exactly how the lecture is going to be delivered, please ask your topic coordinator. They will inform you and they will be able to give you the best information. However, it is likely that your lecture is going to be either online and synchronous, which means that it's actually live streamed and you can turn up online and watch that lecture as it's happening, 
or it may be online and asynchronous, which means that it will be pre-recorded and posted onto the topic flow site. Now, a second type of class that you might see show up on your timetable is a tutorial or a workshop. A tutorial or a workshop tends to be a bit of a smaller cohort than a lecture, typically 20 or 30 students, although it could be up to 50 students in the larger workshops. And the intention of a tutorial or a workshop is to enable you to have an opportunity to actually participate actively, discuss the topic material, give your own opinion, maybe work on some problems in a small group. So come to those tutorials or workshops ready <laughs> to participate, right? So come having shown up to the lecture or watched the lecture, having done the reading, and come prepared to actually actively engage with other students and with the tutor or the lecturer. A seminar is a little bit of a combination of these two options of lecture and tutorial workshop. So a seminar is where in typically in person, but again, your topic coordinator will let you know if your seminar is in person or online, you have usually about a two hour session where you get both the informational component and discussion and activities with the class. So that's a little bit about the different types of classes that you can expect at Flinders. But as I said, your best guide if you have any questions or you're unsure will be to go to the topic guide or to email your topic coordinator and find out from them if you're at all unsure what is the exact delivery mode or what can I expect in each of your topics, you'll also find that there are certain things that stay pretty standard. You'll have to do things like readings. You might have to watch some videos. You'll have to read certain documents that are standardized so that you know where to find the information. Next, I'm going to hand over to another of my colleagues who'll take you through some of these important documents and tell you how to find them. Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to Flinders University. We really hope you have an enjoyable and successful semester. I just wanted to run through a few things with you that you might need to know from the beginning of the semester. My name's Dr Phil Palmer and I'm a lecturer in financial accounting in the business area of the college and I teach first year accounting topics. The four things that I wanted to run through with you today are very important. The Flinders Learning Online platform known as Flow is where everything is kept in the online space. Statement of assessment methods topic guide and readings are all found on the Flow system. So you really need to make sure that you're familiar with Flow and know how to access Flow. And we'll talk about those four things in more detail. So when you log on to the Flow page, you'll find that there's some topic specific information. Each topic has its own Flow page. But there's also some standardized information which appears at the top of each topic. Some of the key things that appear right at the top of the topic page is the announcements tab. This is where your topic coordinator will announce important information as it develops during the semester. So you always want to make sure you're logging onto Flow on a daily basis and checking for announcements and any updates. Also, if you've got online classes, the collaborate icon is at the top of the page. That's where you'll access your online classes. Then underneath that, there's some topic information and resources, communication hub and assessment hub. And the other things that we're going to run through are found in those tabs. So clicking on the topic information and resources tab, you'll find that there's normally a topic guide found there and also a readings tab. And we'll talk about those two things in more detail shortly. In the communication hub, there's the discussion forum icon and a student lounge and discussion forum. This is an opportunity for you to post questions or discussion items that other students or the topic coordinator can comment on or answer. An important piece of information is going to be found in the assessment hub. It's called the statement of assessment methods 
that's very important. We'll talk about that. But also there's the link for assignment extensions and resubmission notifications. Going back to the topic guide, each topic will be slightly different, but there'll be some documentation to help you from the beginning of the semester. In this particular instance, it's a PDF form, but it contains various items such as details of the teaching staff, any textbook details if your topic has a textbook or readings, the lecture or seminar outline and reading guide. This is going to be particularly important for you in the current environment where we have some teaching on campus, some online and some in a hybrid mode. Any assessment item overviews, tutorial, seminar or workshop activities. Again, these may be on campus, online or in hybrid mode. Other useful information and links to university policies and procedures. Moving to the Statement of Assessment Methods, which was under the Assessment tab, this is a really important document. It sets out how you are going to be assessed in the topic. So you'd really need to have an understanding of this from the beginning of the semester. For instance, in this particular topic, there are three assessment items. It gives you the weighting of each item. It tells you the due date of each item, any consequences for late submission, and whether there's a hurdle involved. Those categories are standard across all topics, but of course the details will change from topic to topic. So you really want to have a, have a look at this document and understand how you're going to be assessed in the topic from the beginning of the semester. The readings list is also important, will be topic specific. It may have details about textbooks or other readings that the topic coordinator has asked the library to provide in each topic. You'll need to refer to the topic guide for details about what you need to do. But if there's any pre-reading that you need to do before class, it's a good idea to check the readings tab because that's where these readings are likely to be found. Hopefully that makes sense. We welcome you to Flinders. Again, we hope you have an enjoyable experience, but please feel free to ask any of the staff if you have any questions. Thank you. The next topic we're going to cover today is called academic integrity, and this is vital to your success at university. I'm going to hand over to one of my colleagues to tell you more about this. Hi again, I'm Jessica Ganawa. I'm a lecturer here in International Relations, and in this short video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about academic integrity at university. Now, this is a really important issue once you start out at university, and most of you are probably a little familiar with the idea of academic integrity from assignments that you had to do at high school. So at university and as academics, part of our function here is to engage in research in our chosen field. And we're constantly engaging in and contributing to a discussion around creating knowledge sharing ideas and sharing cutting edge research into different types of issues. And as students coming to university, we want you to start to begin to engage in that discussion. So as you start to do assignments at university, we want you to acknowledge and build on existing ideas and research in the scholarship. And this may, the way that you do that may vary slightly according to your discipline. So again, the best guide for this will be your topic coordinator in your introductory topics at university. They will teach you more specifically about how to apply this and the way in which they expect you to acknowledge and build on existing ideas in your field. However, what we can broadly say across all disciplines, regardless of which degree you're studying, is that we take academic integrity very seriously. And this means that any time that you are drawing on ideas from someone else, and certainly any time that you are directly taking words from someone else, even if it's only one sentence or even half a sentence, you will need to reference that external source. So you might be drawing on a journal article or a book 
or even a news article that you've read, if it's appropriate, given whatever the assignment is. If you draw on the ideas from that piece of work, or if you use exact words from that piece of work, you will need to reference it and or provide a direct citation as appropriate. Now, you might think, well, you know, I read that journal article and actually it really closely aligns with what I think anyway, so I don't really need to reference them. It's always better at university to err on the side of referencing too much <laughs> rather than too little, particularly when you're just starting out and you're kind of learning the mechanics of the academic world. If you're thinking, well, this all sounds a bit overwhelming, I'm not exactly sure what this all means, I want some more supports and I'd like some more resources, we have a flow site for that very purpose. So if you go into flow, you'll see that all of your topics have a flow site. In flow, there is a search function. If you search for academic integrity for students, you can self-enroll yourself in this topic and they have really useful resources. There's a tutorial, there's a quiz, there's more information about text matching. You may find that as part of your introductory topic, you actually have to do the academic integrity quiz anyway, as a non-graded assessment item, maybe even as a graded assessment item. So you may be doing it anyway. If that is not the case, I encourage all of you to go have a bit of a look around that flow site and use those really important resources. Another resource that I'd like all of you to be aware of as you're starting out at university is the text matching function. So every flow site will have a test ma text matching function where you can submit your assignments as a draft before you do the final submission. So this is a draft, you are submitting this here, this will not do the final submission unless you indicate that you want to do the final submission. So this is a really great way to check, to just pop your essay in, pop your report in, pop your assignment in to this text matching function and just check that you haven't accidentally taken some exact phrasing or an exact sentence from an external source without referencing it properly. Now, I'm sure that your topic coordinators will talk more about this text matching function in your topics, or you can go to the student learning support services, find out more about it, how to exactly read your draft and how to understand what is appropriate and what is not appropriate in terms of if something shows up as an exact match. But I want all of you to be aware that this exists. It's an amazing resource and I would encourage all of you to use it. So that's it from me. Finally, I just wanna say, enjoy the journey ahead. It's very exciting that you're all starting out at university. I hope to meet many of you during your time here and I hope you truly have a wonderful journey. Thank you. In our final presentation of today, I'm going to hand over to one of my colleagues who will tell you a little bit more about innovation and why this is such an important part of our degrees here at Flinders. Welcome, uh, I'm, my name is Bert Verhoeven. I'm the Associate Professor and Director of Innovation and Enterprise. So you may ask yourself, how can innovation enterprise help you? Well, we help you learn how to address challenges with innovative solutions to get ready for the future. But then you ask, well, why do I need knowledge and skills to get future ready, right? What does that mean? Okay, well, the future is VUCA. And VUCA means volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And, and that means that you have lots of new challenges that require you to find new solutions. Um, you have challenges that you don't even know, they may not even exist yet. Um, you need to proactively take action to solve those challenges and uh, there are very many different perspectives and points of views nowadays, so it makes it very complex. You're also unfamiliar, unfamiliar and it's ambiguous, yeah? And so you may be forced to the edge of your comfort zone because you don't, you've never done it before. So that's where, you know, the future becomes very uncertain. And COVID is pushing organizations to make it even, even worse in, in, in uncertainty terms. It, the COVID pushes organizations to scale remote work, to accelerate digitization, and to accelerate automation, as you can see there. And Gen Z, uh, you, most of you, will have 17 uh, jobs across five different careers during your lifetime. That is amazing to think about, right? 
your mom and dad, or, and especially your grandfather, would not have dreamed about this. They had one career and that was it. Often also one job. At the same time, you as a generation know that three out of four of you know that you will have to learn the whole time. Your whole life you will be continuously learning. But what learning do you do? That's, that, that is often very much skill-driven. And it's not only uh, Generation Z, it's also all employees, as research shows here, 50% will need reskilling by 2025. And what kind of skills are there? Yeah? Do, what, what kind of skills do you need to learn? Well, industry research has shown that, that uh, the companies and organizations demand for skills like innovation, active learning, uh, complex problem solving, yeah, uh, uh, creativity, originality. Uh, uh, technology, also resilience, uh, reasoning, all these kind of skills that uh, you learn by uh, uh, addressing a challenge and creating solutions. So we at Eno help you learn and practice skills to do four things, to envision something new, so purpose and imagination, uh, to bring something new into being, so creativity. So to bring something new that you can use, that is where innovation comes in. And then ultimately, if you would continue with our, our programs, you, you, you get to entrepreneurship and you bring innovative solutions to scale. You let everybody enjoy your fantastic new ideas. And that can be done in every field. Yeah? If you say, oh, I'm in government, I don't do entrepreneurship. No, that, that, is, that is not uh, uh, the case. You will have challenges in government, as we saw with COVID. That, uh, that, that are unheard of, and uh, you don't know how to respond to that. And that's what you learn here in, uh, in, uh, in Eno. So what we have is we have empathy, creativity, and value creation in our first topic in the first year, and purpose, imagination, and growth mindset uh, as a second uh, part of, uh, of focus. Uh, and uh, the ones who are starting with us will, uh, will learn about that. So get ready for the future, Eno 101. Uh, where you get active learning of knowledge and skills, uh, project-based workshops, um, hybrid classes online and face-to-face. -face. So if you are sick, you can still follow the classes uh, online. Um, work on a challenge you are passionate about and uh, you learn about creativity and innovation. So Inno you know, is fun and a little bit different because we do everything workshop-based and, and, and project-based. And some people struggle with that. You, you, some people prefer to get the right answer to the right questions. We're in innovation and the rest of the future, we don't even know what the questions may be, right? So you sometimes have to be courageous. And this is, I love this quote from Brene Brown where it says, yeah, choose courage over comfort. So uh, you can sit on your couch or you can come to us and do our course and be courageous. And we help you with that, obviously. We don't let you just hang there. So major of innovation enterprise, if you're interested, there's lots of topics that you can see here, six topics, but the first topics is done by uh, lots of students from all over the university. And, uh, and you will meet people from all over the university as well, which is, again, uh, an interesting experience, I think. Thank you so much. I hope to see you in one of our uh, inner topics in the first semester or second semester. Thank you. Bye-bye. Your heads are no doubt spinning by all of that information. These are key things that you need to be aware of, but I encourage you to come back and watch through this video again if you need to, to make sure that you understand all of the different supports on, on offer to you. Also, remember that if you Google Flinders University Student Support, you'll find an excellent page with lots and lots of links to all of the key support services we have here on campus. Next, we're going to run orientation sessions in each of your disciplines, and you can see a list of those up on the screen. When you registered to get access to this welcome lecture, you will have also received the link for our interactive session for your discipline. In order to join that discipline, make sure that you click on that link and you'll be taken to a Collaborate room. Collaborate is what we use for video conferencing and for online tutorials here at Flinders, and you'll be able to be taken straight into that room so that you can connect with staff, students, and mentors in your discipline. Those sessions will start from 10.45 on Tuesday, the 22nd of February, so please make sure you join us then. At those sessions, you'll also have the opportunity to ask questions about the information that we've presented today that can be answered by academic staff as well as some of our student representatives. Once again, welcome to Flinders, and we are so excited that you're joining us this semester. And we're looking forward to getting to know you as you commence our topics. We wish you all the best of luck for your first semester, and please do reach out if you have any questions or require any support whatsoever.